TOA community. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Robert Linkle, trainingtheolderadult.com. I hope you're all doing well, having a great day. I wanted to talk to you today about specific training techniques for working with older populations, in particular, specifically focusing on eccentric training, the benefits, the value of it, what types of eccentric training techniques are there out there, specifically utilizing a flywheel, uh, creating a lot of momentum, and then harnessing that momentum and redirecting that momentum. Um, some of these tools are rather expensive. There are very simple and much less expensive ways uh, to implement this as well. So we're going to kind of dive into that a little bit. But specifically looking at the massive amount of research now that is really coming out. We have over 3,000 uh, 3, articles that specifically feature the word older adult, senior, training the frail elder, the elderly, whatever term uh, that people want to kind of throw in there that basically means 50 and over, those with some disabilities or uh, that have a, uh, suffering from any kind of disease um, or any combination of those three, um, really kind of hit our demographic of an older adult. And with that, what are some of the strategies that really work a little bit more efficiently? So in this particular article, to start us off, we're just going to talk about general principles and like the general idea of resistance training, and then we'll get more into the eccentrics. But strength training in elderly and useful tool against sarcopenia. Absolutely. This is from 2022. Basically looking at the idea of is resistance training the most useful tool to help our clients get stronger and in resistance training versus body weight training or any other type of exercise, is it the most effective? So looking at kind of the three little criteria they put into this, number one, overload should be adapted. A positive adaptation occurs only if the actual training load overcomes a habitual level, which basically means is if I can curl 20 pounds for 10 reps over and over and over again with minimal recovery, it's probably not enough overload to really change anything because I'm able to replicate the result over and over and over again with the minimal amount of effort, okay? Basically is with muscle fiber, it needs to be torn in a good way where the muscle will then build back stronger the next time. Like you need to create a little bit of damage and that's why we get sore. That's DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. That's why you're like, oh man, do I feel that workout from yesterday? That's a little bit of damage that was done. When you're barely able to move, when you're so point tender, when you touch your muscles, they hurt. That means you did way too much. You overdid it so much. And some people seek that every day. And that is not a safe way to train. You should not be gauging the success or the difficulty of your workouts based on how sore you are after. There are definitely days where you're going to get done and you're going to be like, man, we really hit hamstrings today. It's more than we normally did. My hamstrings are very shaky. I feel a little off balance. I feel them the next day. I really feel them the next day. Delayed onset of muscle soreness, DOMS is usually 24 to 48 hours. That's when you really start to feel some of that soreness of something that was non-traditional. We normally do 30 reps of each muscle group and today we did 60, right? Like we doubled it or you worked at a bigger, deeper range of motion or you worked longer in, in tempo. We did three by three second, really slow reps versus one by one that were really fast. You change something and your body had some type of response to it in terms of this is really difficult. Some of the fiber was now torn in a good way and it built back even stronger. And that's a good thing. So a tiny bit of soreness, but just kind of feeling your body and being like, yeah, I worked yesterday, the day before that, that's a good thing. Okay. And that means you're providing the appropriate amount of overload. Your body will continue to gradually work its way a little bit stronger. Bones will then respond because the muscles are pulling on the bones. Bones are being, uh, you know, for the muscle, it's or origin and it's insertion. It's got to occur somewhere along uh, the bony part of, of the body. So if the muscle is contracting and getting slightly overworked, it's got to be pulling on the bone and the bone goes, man, if we're going to get pulled on like this, then we need to dense it up. So it starts to the osteoclast and osteoblast do their little battle back and forth and more muscle or excuse me, more bone density starts to get laid down. And, and because of the result of the demand of the muscle being applied onto it. And because you're doing this over and over and over again, well, now your heart rate has to pump your oxygenation, your cardiovascular system, all this has to work better. So your cardiovascular system, your cardiovascular health starts to improve because you're pushing freshly oxygenated blood flow through your body. It's increasing in, in its density all the way through the distal end of your finger, fingers, the distal end of your toes, your capillary exchanges in the distal ends of your body, all the way up through your brain. You're thinking better. You're more clear. You're more efficient, right? 
So all this benefits from the base of resistance training, but you have to apply an overload for all of those positive things to occur. If you just keep lifting the same load that you always do, change will not occur. We talk about this all the time. You have to get uncomfortable, okay? Through discomfort comes change. Through excessive pain comes injury, right? So we don't want to go that far. But through discomfort comes change, all right? Specificity and individualization exercises are different based on training experiences and genetics, even in the same age range, 100%. You are going to have individuals that are going to respond to a certain thing, right? A certain way because of how their genetics are, how their body is built. We are mesomorphs, endomorphs, ectomorphs, mesoendos, your different body types, your different blood types. Your body's going to respond to different styles of training. And then periodization, your training load, i.e. your intensity, reps, sets, loads, tempos, recoveries, all that may vary over the time to avoid accommodation. So you're going to need to change it because your body is going to start to adapt. And once it starts to adapt, you're going to have to find something new to challenge it again. So that's why in the very beginning, you've never lifted weights before. If you come out and you're like, I'm going to do three sets of 10 on these four machines and you do them and you're like, I'm sore. And the next day you're a little better. And then you keep doing those same machines. And after two weeks, your body's like, yeah, I mean, we kind of do this all the time. Something needs to change. Maybe I do sets of 15 now. Maybe I go a little slower on the way down. Maybe I increase the load a little bit. Something has to change or else the body, its ability to adapt to whatever demand you put on it, basically the accommodation process has occurred and it's over with. So where's the new demand? There's no more demand for me to change. I'm just going to stay right here now. So I can always do 30 pounds on all these machines. That's great. But the moment you address 40, well, I can't do it now. Okay. So how are we going to continue to grow? You've got to continue to change things. And again, we know all this. What results as of that? Increases in muscular strength, muscular endurance, and power. How quickly can you manipulate and move your body? Your bone and mineral density, your connected tissue, all that starts to remodel and work better. Your car, uh, cardiovascular, your metabolic health, um, cross sections, all of that through your muscle fibers, all this grows. Growth hormone and blood, glu excuse me, blood glucose regulation. Um, your ability to become less frail is awesome. Like you just take people like my dad, name you, who looked like he was 85 years old and all of a sudden now is moving like a 70 year old, right? Like you basically can walk back the, the, the moment arm on the, the on the, um, you know, father time. Like you can make this, you can, it's like the fountain of youth. Like you can take things back here a little bit simply by improving your muscular strength and then it fountains into all these other things that we just talked about and all of a sudden you're moving better talking better feeling better sleeping better eating better everything is improving okay that's why we always talk about sarcopenia as the linchpin right to all of these bad things that come about if you're weak all of these other diseases all these other injuries all of this stuff you're susceptible to all of it because your body's so weak but if you're strong Resistance training, right, is the linchpin to success and all these other things that could be so good for your body. So keep that in mind as we go through. We don't want you to fall down. We want you to become less frail, less able of falling because as soon as you fall, it, it's not a good, you've got about a 30% chance if you're over the age of 65, you got about a 30% chance of returning to normal, quote unquote. It's very minimal you're going to improve, right, or go better than you were prior to the fall. Then we look a little bit more specifically into flywheel training, okay, and what flywheel training can create. Flywheel is basically a spinning wheel, as it sounds, that has a belt that straps and wraps around it. And as that wheel spins, it gathers momentum and it throws it back in the other direction and you have to slow it down. You speed it up, you slow it down, you speed it up, you slow it down. Think of like those old toys where you had a top with a string you'd wrap around and you'd pull the string, right, and you'd throw the top and the top would spin. Imagine if the string didn't let go, okay? And when it hit and it started to spin, it reeled it back up. How quick it would just rip out of your hand, right? If it reeled back up. Well, what if I could, if that top didn't move, I could pull it and then I could slowly let it back in. Think of a pull start on your lawnmower. If the tension it took to pull out, pulled back and you had to decelerate, accelerate, decelerate, accelerate, decelerate. Think of the work capacity you could put in there, okay? When we look at that, Okay, and it kind of talks about the, the values of eccentric flywheel training. 
And then specifically traditional regular eccentric training, just in a squat, you're coming down five, four, three, down in your squat, two, one, and then coming up and quick. That's just eccentric. You know, you're stretching the muscle, stretching it, stretching it, time under tension, just suffering through that burn and then coming up. If we're able to kind of work those two things back to back, you're going to see great value in getting strong quickly because what do we need? We need the muscle fiber to be torn in a good way. Okay. So comparison wise, and I'm just giving you an example. This isn't something from a research article, but to give you an example, the amount of workload that I could do on a flywheel, okay. Having bad hips and a bad back and everything else that I have, I can hook into a flywheel and I could put a, a flywheel on there. That's that weighs two kilos. Okay. Four and a half pounds. And I can create momentum on that. That's going to, as I come up, be, let's say 50 pounds of pressure. And then 50 pounds of pressure pulls me back down and I accelerate it up. I accelerate it down and I can take that 50 pounds and I can work that momentum. Okay. And that can be very difficult for me. It can create a great burn and I can tear my fibers and build them up really good. And I can, you know, continue to increase the workload, et cetera. Okay. More reps, more sets, more load, bigger wheels, et cetera. Any of those things. To get the same amount of work that I get in a one second up, one second down, one second up, one second down, to get that same amount of muscular damage, this is good damage being done, I would have to hold a 50 pound dumbbell and come down in a seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, come up quick and have to do like five sets of 10 like that. It would be very difficult for me to create that same burn that I can get so much quicker, so much more efficient on the flywheel because of the momentum. When we're just squatting with resistance and regular load, there's no momentum to overcome necessarily. And with the flywheels, that momentum that we are creating is being thrown in another direction and we have to decelerate what we just created. The cool part is, is you can't really overlift, okay? Because you're the one that created the momentum. So if I created it, I should be able to decelerate it and stop it. I just have to learn how to do that. That's when you get on a flywheel and you're like, oh, I can definitely go too hard. Not really, you just have to learn how to do it. You don't know how to do it yet. So as you get more efficient, more specific, more uh, capable moving through those ranges, you'll get much better at it. And the same goes with this eccentric training. The slow controlled or the dynamic flywheel movement patterns of eccentric training to get your body strong, it works exceptionally well. Take your time with eccentric training. It will be extremely beneficial for you, for your clients. Learn how to do it right. If you don't know, go find yourself a personal trainer or a strength coach. They can assist you in doing that. I'm Robert Linkle. This is trainingtheolderadult.com. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to share, subscribe, send this out to any of your friends, family members, or colleagues. I would much appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you so much. And until next time, please continue to fight your good fight against sarcopenia. Take care. Love you. And we'll talk to you soon.